Welcome, Welcome to, to Istanbul. Istanbul. And thanks for joining us on an exciting adventure through this very ancient, but also very modern city of 20 million people that borders Europe and Asia. It's going to be exciting. Let's go. First up, we will explore the breathtaking Hagia Sophia, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that has served as a church, mosque, and museum throughout its history. Next, we'll visit the stunning Blue Mosque, known for its intricate blue tiles and distinctive architecture. After that, we'll take a peaceful stroll through the Gulhani Park, one of the oldest and most beautiful parks in Istanbul. And finally, we will descend into the ancient Basilica Cistern, an underground water reservoir that has been beautifully preserved over the centuries. But that's not all. Stay tuned until the end of the video to experience the magical atmosphere of iftar, the traditional meal to break the fast during Ramadan at the Sultan Ahmet Park. Good morning from Istanbul. So we are on the ferry and we're going across from Katakoy on the Asian side, which is where we're staying, to um, Imanunu on the European side to go take a um, walking tour of the old town of Istanbul. So we're excited. Good morning. All right, so we are standing above the ancient Roman horse track or the race track, the Hippodrome. And it was right here what well, today we have this nice square that basically runs alongside the Blue Mosque and the Hagia Sophia. So the Romans, they knew that one way to keep order and peace in their major cities was to keep the people entertained. Now back in the ancient, ancient Roman times, they had the Colosseums and they had uh, gladiator fights and different kind of battles and, and things like that. But by the time they were making um, Constantinople, their major city, and uh, growing this city up, uh, they had already changed to Christianity. And so um, Constantinople made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire. And of course, Christians don't like human sacrifice and they don't like to unnecessarily kill uh, humans, right? So uh, by this time, human sacrifice was out. The Roman Empire was no longer doing that. So they established this giant racetrack um, that, uh, so that's how they kept the people entertained, was to have chariot races around the Hippodrome. So we've got a really cool Egyptian obelisk that was brought here in uh, the early um, first or second century. And that dates back from like the fifth century BC. And on the other end, we have the German fountain, which was a gift from Germany and the early part, very early part of the 20th century, when Germany was courting favor with Turkey, looking for allies as it prepared for World War I. So we've got the German fountain, the Egyptian obelisk, the Blue Mosque, and the Hagia Sophia right here above the ancient Roman horse track of the Hippodrome. Welcome to the Sultan Ahmet the First Mosque, otherwise known as the Blue Mosque. And this grand building, um, it's uh, one of the biggest mosques in the world. And uh, it was built by Sultan Ahmet to rival the mosque in Mecca in Saudi Arabia. So it's just, it, it's so impressive on the outside. It has six minarets, which um, some people say are a bit excessive. Uh, when it was built, and I guess there's the legend is that he requested a golden minaret, and the uh, the builder mistaken that for six minarets. I guess it sounds similar in the Turkish language, but uh, anyway, so it's called the Blue Mosque because of all the little blue tiles up at the top, and so that's what catches your eye when you walk inside. And in fact. Um, the Turkish people or uh, the Turkish country is known for the color blue and in fact the French word for blue is turquoise. How do you like that? Um, so a pro tip, uh, ladies when you come you have to cover your head 
So if you don't bring a scarf with you, they have some outside that you can borrow. They're free when you when you uh, when you come in. But you might want to bring your own. Um, and also, you have to take your shoes off when you come inside. So another pro tip is to bring a bag, so uh, you don't have to worry about your shoes getting mixed up with anyone else's at the entryway. They do have cubby holes you can throw them in, but it might be a good idea just to bring a bag so you can carry your own shoes in. Uh, so you can put your own shoes in and carry them around with you, right? So, Blue Mosque, Istanbul. Gotta see it. Alright, so I'm in Gulhani Park, which is like a, I don't know, it's a beautiful park. It's right in the middle of the hubbub of Istanbul. So if you need a little place to duck in to get out of the, the you know, the, the grind of the, the big city, this is a beautiful place to be. And right now the tulips are in bloom. They look really beautiful and I am enjoying a simit. And these are kind of like the, I don't know, like the bagel of Istanbul, I suppose. Um, they're pretty good. Um, Normally you can get them just a plain simit and uh, I mean that's good but like this one is really good because it's been halved and it's got like cream cheese uh, in the middle so it's quite tasty and you can get them with Nutella as well and they're like 50 Turkish Lira per simit so they're not very much and it's a quick snack on the go as you're walking around and they have like little trolleys all over the city that are selling them so uh, yeah when you're in Istanbul you have to pick up a simit on the go and this is the ruins or are the ruins of the orphanage of St. Paul and so in 579 AD, I believe it was the Emperor Justinian and his wife set up an orphanage to care for the orphans uh, of the area. So uh, I think they believe this was in operation for around 500 years, so a very long time. Uh, but yeah, right here in the middle of Istanbul in this nice park, had no clue. We we're walking through admiring the flowers and we got the ruins of the orphanage of St. Paul. All right, welcome to the Hagia Sophia. This beautiful building is possibly the greatest house of worship in the history of the world. For a thousand years, it was the greatest church in Christianity. And then when the Ottomans took over Constantinople and turned it into Istanbul, it was converted into a mosque. And then at the, in the early 20th century, it was converted into a museum. And now it's back into a mosque. It is just a beautiful, beautiful place. It's a treasure. And um, it's definitely one of those must-see things, places that you must visit in Istanbul. So you have to pay to get in now. It's no longer free, but it is absolutely amazing on the inside. You have to check out the Hagia Sophia. As of January 2024, the Hagia Sophia has a 25 euro entry fee for all tourists above the age of eight years old. The Istanbul Museum Pass does not grant entry. Tourists are currently only allowed access to the upper galleries, and the ground floor is reserved for local worshippers of the Islamic faith. Female visitors must cover their heads. Scarfs are available at the entrance if you don't have one. Men and women must dress modestly. If you have exposed shoulders or knees, you will be required to wear a special suit that looks like it was designed for hazmat protection. So this is Viking graffiti in the Hagia Sophia in the upper level. So there was a Viking, Haldon, his name is on there, 
and he was a guard to the emperor of the uh, the Byzantine Empire when he was here from no the Nordic countries or whatever. So apparently he got bored and started making graffiti, proving that bored soldiers will get up to no good <laughs> at all times. As you enter this architectural masterpiece, your eyes are immediately drawn to the awe-inspiring dome. The dome was the central element in the church's groundbreaking design. Placing a round dome atop a square building seems simple today, but 1,500 years ago, it was revolutionary. Magnificent mosaics adorn the walls and ceilings. Each mosaic tells a story, a testament to the skill and artistry of generations past. The Hagia Sophia is a living testament to the rich tapestry of history that defines Istanbul. Each layer of its history adds another dimension to its allure, inviting visitors to unravel its secrets and marvel at its beauty. As you wander through its cavernous halls and towering domes, you'll find yourself transported to another time, another world, from the intricate marble floors to the ornate calligraphy that adorns its walls. Every corner of the Hagia Sophia is a feast for the senses. Lose yourself in the timeless splendor of the Hagia Sophia. Let its mosaics inspire you, its history captivate you, and its beauty enchant you. Because here, in the heart of Istanbul, the past meets the present in a symphony of wonder and awe. If you're looking for a place to catch the sunset over ancient Istanbul, head over to the Seven Hills Restaurant. Go inside, take the elevator up to the top, have yourself a drink, and possibly feed a seagull. This is the best place to watch the sunset over this amazing city. All right, so this is the Basilica Cistern, which was the ancient, which was the water supply to ancient Constantinople, built by the Romans to supply fresh water to their city. And it is, uh, it is so cool. It is a forest of columns of all different types. And so the the building is, um, it was built for functionality and not really for beauty. Because as you walk around, you might wonder, well, why, why does nothing match? Why are all the different columns different? And basically, they used ruins of other things that they had laying around, some Greek columns, some old Roman columns, and they just used whatever they could find to provide the cover to protect their water supply. And what's really interesting, at one point, you see a couple columns, and they're on top of Medusa heads, giant Medusa heads. One is upside down and one is laying on its side. And, you know, a lot of people wonder, I guess over the years, everybody's wondered, well, why are the Medusa heads, you know, why are they in that position? And I think the answer is that it's just practicality. They needed something to stand those columns on uh, at a certain height. And those particular Medusa heads, one of them upside down and one of them at its, on its side, provided the, the height they needed to stand the column on. But um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, so cool. The water supply for ancient Constantinople. When you're in Istanbul, you have to check out the Basilica Cistern. We were in Istanbul during the month of Ramadan and were fortunate to observe the tradition of iftar. As the sun begins to set over the historic city, the vibrant energy of Sultan Ahmet Square undergoes a transformation. The bustling streets filled with the echoes of daily life now give way to a sense of anticipation and reverence. At the call to prayer, families and friends gather in the heart of Sultan Ahmet Square, drawn together by the sacred tradition of Ramadan. As the sky shifts from hues of gold to dusky blue, the aroma of traditional Turkish delicacies fills the air, mingling with the sounds of laughter and conversation. Amidst the iconic backdrop of the Blue Mosque and the Hagia Sophia, makeshift tables adorned with dates, olives, and savory pastries line the square. With a sense of unity and shared purpose, 
people of all ages and backgrounds come together to partake in the iftar, the evening meal that marks the end of the day's fast. What an experience. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed exploring some of Istanbul's iconic landmarks. The beauty of Istanbul has endured for millennia and it's waiting for you to discover. Like and share this video if you've been inspired to visit or leave a comment and let us know about your experiences in Istanbul and subscribe to our channel for more travel content. Until next time, farewell.